episode two, PPC to win. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I created a new series on this YouTube channel called PPC to win. If you still haven't watched episode one, I will leave it linked in the description box below and up here in the cards. In this series, I'm uh, collaborating with my friend Mina Elias, who is an Amazon seller, CEO of MMA Nutrition, as well as founder of PPC University. We're going to be talking about everything PPC ads. In this episode, episode two, we're talking about the definitions that you need to know all about terms, terminology, impressions, ACOS, ROAS, what are these things? What do they mean and why do you need to learn them? Let's get started. So Mina, let's start uh, in video two of our series. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, Amazon campaign manager, how it works, a few definitions, because, you know, when you want to create a good ad campaign, you need to know these definitions. You need to know what an impression is, what an ACOS is and all these terms. So I'll leave it up to you. Awesome. OK, so right now we're in one of my accounts, campaign manager. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. So it, we have here, you'll see it right, right around here, portfolios. What portfolios are is basically they're like folders. And, and I like to sort uh, every single SKU or every single product in its own portfolio. And the reason I do that is imagine if you have two products, one that's like been around, has a thousand reviews, and the, the other one is brand new. If you look at the performance of them combined, it's going to look like average because one is doing good and one is just, you just launched it, one is doing mm -hmm. bad. But when you sort them by in the different portfolios, you can go into the portfolio and you look, you can look at the specific performance of that specific product. And so it sorts everything by product. So that's what portfolios are. Now up here, you'll see you have like some fields that you can look at. It's just like easy, um, easy, like to immediately like identify like yeah. certain yeah. metrics. Mm -hmm. So you have your spend, you have your sales. Impressions is basically if anyone, if your product shows up when someone's scrolling, that's an impression. That's an impression. It doesn't mean that someone clicked or anything, mm -hmm. but it just showed up. Mm -hmm. And so impressions basically means like 94,000 people glanced at me. Um, ACOS is your average cost of sales. So here's how I would describe ACOS. If, if you have a $20 product and it costs you $10 to, you spent $10 on PPC and, and you made $20 one sale, that's a 50% ACOS. Okay. So it, it costs you 50% of your product to make that sale. Now, let's say that you spent your product costs $10 and you spend $1, uh, that's 10% ACOS. You spent a 10th, 10% of your product sale price to sell that product. So obviously the lower the ACOS, the better. Um, and let's talk about break even ACOS real quick. So what is break even yeah. ACOS? Now, let's say that your product costs $20 and your gross margin, your gross profit margin is 50%. It means you make $10 in profit if you don't spend any money on PPC. Mm -hmm. Now, that 50% gross profit margin, that is your break even ACOS. Now, if you spend up to that $10, that 50%, you're not making money, you're not losing money, you're breaking even. So you spend $10 on advertising, you sell a unit, one unit, and so you didn't make money, you didn't lose money. Now, if you go above that 50%, now you're uh, not profitable, you're losing money. And if you go below that 50%, now you're profitable. So it's very important to understand what your break even ACOS is. So you can, you know, because I, I want to optimize my bids based on my break even ACOS. So if my, if my, one of the keywords ACOS is 67%, okay, I want to lower it. But if it's 22%, okay, then I'm not worried. It's okay. It's good. Mm. I don't want to keep lowering it. Mm. Just keep, let it perform the way it's been performing. Yeah. Um, Obviously, uh, in the beginning, when we do launch our products, a cost, you know, it's going to be high. That's 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 high. normal. Yeah, it's going to be very high. Exactly. So don't panic and freak out anybody who's watching the video. <laughs> but you mm -hmm. need to know what these terms are and you need to monitor them. So you you know that, you know, your ads are performing well. That's the most important part. Yeah, exactly. And so here we have CPC cost per click. Now, Cost per click, basically what it means is if when someone clicks on your ad and I'm going to quickly jump in here just so people can very clearly see, uh, let's type in water bottle, use our, our same example. 
Okay, see how where it says here, sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. So just by me seeing this, if I scroll down, that's an impression. Okay, Yeah. now I'm going to go in here and click on it. Now I just made them pay money. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how much money? That is the cost per click. So for my product, <clears throat> on average, when someone clicks on that sponsored ad here, that is a dollar and 38 that comes out of my pocket. Mm. Now, again, same with here. See sponsor products to this item. If I click on this, that now that's, you know, if someone clicks on me, if I was there, that's another dollar 38. Mm -hmm. And so that's what cost per click means. You know, clicks, obviously it's how many clicks we got. Click through rate is okay. So click through rate is the number of clicks divided by the number of impressions mm -hmm. and do not dwell on this number. A lot of people are like, I have such a low click through rate. It doesn't matter. It just means that there's a lot of traffic to that certain keyword. And, you know, people are not clicking your, your listing. And it's fine. You know, it, it, click through rate would make sense if you were running like a visual advertisement. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're on Facebook and you were running a, an advertisement of a video and, and the click through rate is very low. Okay. So a lot of people are seeing this video. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of people that you're paying money to see this video are seeing it, but they're not clicking. That's yeah. fine. That's a good metric here. It's not because there's just a, like a lot of people searching. So it doesn't make sure. any sense, you know, but it maybe does, you know, over the long term, after like a couple of weeks, if you see that your click through rate, don't panic, of course, but you might also look at your uh, business reports and see, well, maybe I should change my, um, Maybe like, maybe I should change my main image. Maybe I should play exactly. around with the title. Maybe I should play around with my pricing, stuff like that, just to improve the click through rate. However, yeah. yes, it is normally very low, but you know, you need to consider yeah. how you can improve it after some time. And maybe yeah. it's like Eid or something and everyone's yes. at home. Yeah. like searching and, and, and looking at stuff. And then your click through rate goes from like, you know, 0.8% to 0.1%. Exactly. And you're like, Oh my God, like no one wants, no, it's just the, a lot of people are shopping, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Orders is how many people ordered the products. Now they have this new thing called the ROAS uh, return on ad spend that the, the reason they added this is Amazon is always trying to catch up to Google AdWords. Mm. So, Here's a tip for everyone watching this. If you guys get good at Google AdWords, you're going to get really good at Amazon PPC. And so ROAS basically is the in invert of ACOS. It's one divided by ACOS. So instead of it being, uh, you know, how much spend divided by how much sales, it becomes how much sales divided by how much spend. Mm -hmm. So if I sold a thousand dollars and I spent uh, you know, uh, $500 on PPC, then it's uh, two, ROAS is two. So I made twice as much money than I spent. So here it says I made 4.58 times as much money than what I spent on ads. So cool. And so we can click into one of those to check out what it's like. And again, we have the same thing here, spend, sales, uh, ROAS, impressions. And down here, we'll see, you know, you have certain columns that you, that you can show. Click on the columns. You can click customize columns. And again, you can show the suggested bid, the default bid, um, targets, products, uh, targets, total targets is basically how many uh, products or keywords it's this uh, campaign is targeting. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically like your, your keywords, you know, yeah. uh, impressions. Again, we talked about that clicks, click through rate spend cost per click, you know, again, all stuff that we talked about. So it's basically don't get intimidated by seeing this dashboard It's just showing you all of like the different metrics for that one campaign. Now here you'll see placements, negative targeting campaign settings and history campaign settings is an important one because here's where you can close the name. So some people might be like, Oh, my, my nomenclature is all messed up. And that's another one thing I want to touch on. Make sure that your name, the names of your campaigns are very clear. I always have the SKU code right at the beginning. So SC stands for Simply Celery. It's mm -hmm. like a nice little code for me to immediately know that this is the product on which this campaign is running. And then it's an auto close match. So again, very easy for me to identify um, budget. If I want to pause it or unpause it when I want to end it. And then I can adjust uh, the targeting, uh, the bidding strategy. So dynamic bids down only means, again, I would just read this because that's all it means is Amazon, if Amazon thinks you're not going to convert, it's going to lower your bid uh, up and down. If it thinks you're going to convert, it, it raises it. If it thinks you're not going to convert, lowers it. Fixed means it doesn't touch it. 
And then we have adjust bids by placement. And now this is another cool feature where if you go into your placement reports and you notice that you're converting a lot better for let's say top of the search. So when you're in the top of the search, you're making crazy sales. Once you start going to the middle of the search, you don't make any sales. Maybe you wanna increase your bid up to like 50 or 100% if that means you're going to win the top of the search, because again, it's a bid. So you guys are fighting, you and your competitors are fighting to who wins the, the top position. Mm -hmm. And now if whoever wins the top position makes the most money, say, okay, Amazon, I'm, I'm allowing you to, to go up to 100% more or 50% more or 20% more than my existing bid. If that means that I'm going to win that position, because that means that you're much more likely to convert, you know, based on the reports. History is a new feature. It just shows you the history of all the changes. I don't think it's that important. Um, I, you know, maybe if you just want to see, hey, what did I change in the past? Uh, and kind of notice if like something gets messed up and you want to go back. Um, but yeah, that, you know, that's pretty much it going into the campaigns. Now, um, I want to talk about the other things we can see here. We can see reports and bulk operations. Now, obviously, billing and payments here is where you can set your billing and, and make sure, you know, if you want to put a credit card or if you want it to take the money right out of your account. Here's a little hack. If you have a credit card that uh, gets a lot of miles, uh, put it here because then the Amazon will take the money from that credit card and you'll make the miles instead of it taking it straight from your account. Exactly. And I do that with my chasing preferred. I get three miles per dollar spend. I fly everywhere for free. Cool. Yeah. So um, here, well, let's talk about reports. So reports is where you can generate the reports that I'm talking about. Yeah. And you have the main two ones are the search term report and mm -hmm. then the placement report. Search term report is the one we talked about where you yeah. can find all of like the, the keywords and the product targets from the discovery campaigns. And then the placement reports, that's where it will show you the performance of your placement. So are you converting really well at the top of the search or are you converting really well in the detail page? And remember, we talked about it. So this is the detail page right here, uh, right here. And then the top of the search is right here. So this is the top of the search. So are people just looking and saying, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to scroll down. I just like, here's the most important ones. I'm going to just buy one of the top of the search and buy it. So if that's the case, then you want to increase your bids for top of the search. And so that's where you would find that in the placement report. And then you just, um, yeah. And then you can go in here and you can actually schedule it. So if you want to do a recurring one, you can actually have it run the report monthly. And then every month it auto downloads the report. Maybe you just schedule an email to yourself, say, Hey, uh, go look at placement reports. And you go look at the placement reports. You look at your placements, see how your placements are doing. And then, adjust the bids by according to that. Um, and now the final thing I want to touch on is bulk sheets. So bulk operations is basically once you have a few campaigns done, it's impossible to, to keep managing it from campaign manager. It just takes so much, so much time, you know, click, 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 click. It, you're going to start getting fatigued. So bulk sheets is basically where you can download everything that's in your campaign manager in one spreadsheet okay so it has all of your campaigns all of your keywords all of your ads everything with all the metrics the echoes impressions the, the, the everything you can think of all in one place and so you can go filter that campaign sort show only the keywords and then you can see okay here's my keyword here's my echoes here's my impressions whatever let me adjust. And then you can adjust the bids in Excel, which is 10 times faster. Yeah. You can say, okay, lower, lower, lower increase. And obviously I have some macros built in. Now I, I would take this and I built some macros. So mm -hmm. now I can like create some rules and adjust everything automatically. And you know, you can and just upload. take that sheet, yeah. upload it back here. And now you're good to go. And, and you know, it makes all the changes at once in bulk. Mm -hmm. And so Maybe when you're starting off, you don't really need to do it. You can still do everything in campaign manager. I would highly recommend though, that you get pretty familiar with it because mm -hmm. as soon as you're familiar with it, then you can start making changes at scale because initially in campaign manager, really, it is so tedious to make those changes that it, you, you don't even want to tweak your campaign. So look into bulk sheets. If you still haven't seen episode one of this series, I will leave it linked in the description box below. Make sure you follow Mina on his YouTube channel, Instagram account. If you want more information about PPC, you can also check out his great course, PPC University, all about 
PPC ads. I'll see you in another video with more information. Bye.